Hey everybody, how you doing? Oh, thanks for coming. And we... <coughs> 
just timed it successfully after Mel's show, and uh, I set my, my countdown for an extra two minutes. So we're starting two minutes uh, later today than usual, but I wanted to give it uh, at least five, six minute countdown. Gives me a chance to get all the buttons set up. So who we got here? We got Rick Halber. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming in. Jody, drone shots, taters here. Carlos is here eating dinner. Uh, Bob Casey is here. Chris, how you doing, Chris? Flea Bag Productions, thanks for coming in. And uh, Arctic Ice Drone, good evening to you, sir. Just got in. So uh, ah, the crowd is building a little bit. Well, welcome to, uh, to the workshop, guys. Uh, let's not uh, see if we can avoid talking about the virus thing. <laughs> I think that uh, the virus thing has been talked to death uh, on all of our live streams, in, in, including mine uh, on Thursday night. So uh, it, it is what it is. And uh, if we're all staying home, we'll have plenty of time to watch YouTube videos and, and maybe do some editing, things like that. Work in the workshop, build some drones. So <laughs> Fleabag agrees with me. Yes, please. Okay, enough of that. Arizona. Arizona. Drone dude, how you doing? Good evening, sir. Good evening to you. Uh, Want to send out my best wishes to Rick. And Rick, I hope you get over this uh, problem you're having with your leg uh, so that we can get on with uh, turning you into uh, an ace FPV pilot <laughs> before we're all dead and gone. <laughs> Me included. <laughs> hey, Ron Lockwood, how you doing, my friend? Thanks for coming in. Thanks for coming in. So I did send out a bunch of invites to uh, to be on the panel, and the panel is basically uh, to uh, kind of monitor things and help me uh, help me run the show. I have some something that I want to something technical that I want to do tonight. And the last couple of weeks we talked about. Uh, we talked about beta flight and a lot of the basics. And um, if any you have any questions that I might be able to answer, just uh, throw throw them in the chat, and I'll I'll see what I can do. Um, what I wanted to do tonight was replace the video transmitter, the VTX, on this uh, little uh, Tyro 89 that we built last week. Um, which I think is one of the only shortcomings of, of this $89 kit. The, uh, the VTX is, is only uh, maxes out at, at 25, uh, 25 milliwatts. The VTX on uh, the little Tiny Hawk, the new Tiny Hawk 2 actually is, uh, goes up to 200 milliwatts and the difference that that makes is uh, is amazing is amazing and and in flying the uh, the Tyro eighty nine um, and I'm gonna put that that little flight up here right now in flying the Tyro eighty nine. I was uh, just tickled to death with the uh, with the way this little thing flew, but but I couldn't get out very far with it. Now the the radio receiver that's in it um, has really good range, but uh, you'll see what happens here if you notice it as I'm flying and I get behind the trees. The uh, the video signal in the goggles really starts to break up, and as soon as I punch up above the trees it comes back clear as a bell and I unfortunately that's uh, what you get out of 25 milliwatts trees are not kind to uh, 5 gigahertz uh, analog video signals so I thought what I what I would do is uh, look around and see if Emacs actually had uh, um, actually had a uh, 
the transmitter that they had in their little tiny hawks so selling separately but it's it's not it's actually a one board solution in that uh, in that little drone so the VTX is on the uh, it's on the, the main board so you can't do that so I went and looked around and I found that uh, Rush the company Rush they make a line of VTX's called the tank and I and I've used them before and they're really considered great VTX's high end well made uh, and they have one they call the uh, the mini the tank mini and it is uh, about the same size as the uh, VTX that's uh, that's that comes with the kit yet <laughs> and I I couldn't believe this it actually uh, goes up to 350 milliwatts and I watched a, a YouTube video of a guy that did a review on these things and actually hooked a power meter up to the antenna output and was getting over 450 milliwatts out of it on the 350 milliwatt setting out of a thing that's about a half inch square I mean it's incredibly tiny you'll see so I went and I ordered one it was a $20 deal now you know when you add 20 bucks to an $89 kit it's like you know 25 percent more but <laughs> I, I, I this little quad flies so good and I, I would like to be able to extend the range to at least double what I'm getting with it so so I decided to get that thing and it came in a couple days ago and I said well that would be a good thing to do on Sunday night since this is a workshop we will uh, take out the old VTX and uh, and reinstall install the new one and set it up and set up the VTX tables in beta flight uh, because it has smart audio I I can set it up so that uh, it, uh, when you first plug it in it's in low power and as soon as you hit the arm switch it'll it'll bump it up to uh, either 200 or 350 whichever I select and uh, I think that uh, with the addition of that video card that's gonna that's gonna turn this uh, this quad into uh, into something uh, that <laughs> that's just gonna be a lot of fun and great to fly because it is it is so small so uh, and Arctic guy says try the Cadex Vista. Um, yeah, the, the, the Cadex Vista is, uh, of course, the uh, the DJI digital FPV system, and and I do have that. And uh, I don't have the Vistas. I have uh, some of the air units. Uh, the Cadex Vista is a uh, corroboration between Cadex and DJI. I, I would imagine where. And, and it's a much smaller unit uh, and, and will fit beautifully in a, in a, in a, in a smaller uh, a smaller quad but unfortunately um, it's way too way too big uh, for this little uh, Tyro 89 which is just a tiny little thing so I don't uh, I don't think that uh, I wish I could put a Vista in it I would love to have a teeny little quad like this that had the DJI digital but that if you look at the size of this thing it uh, it's just it's just way too small there really is no place to put it it requires room on a stack somewhere and on this quad the uh, the, the VTX and I'll show you I'll show you when I get over to the workbench so uh, um, I'm still waiting for somebody to come in here, but uh, I guess uh, either everybody's bashful or they don't want to play. So let me go. Uh, let me go over here, and I will keep an eye. Uh, if you do come in uh, into the green room, uh, and I don't catch you right away, hang in there because I won't be looking uh, back at the computer. But I'm going to go over to the to the work table here and put the little quad on it. And uh, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat too, but if I miss something or miss you in the chat, uh, I apologize. But this uh, this little quad here, and um, I'll show you the uh, there we go. Oh. 
So we have Colin Pinard. How you doing, my friend? Somebody new. Thanks for stopping by. Rotor Geeks put a Vista in a Diatone a 349. Yeah, and, and the Diatone 349 is a is a much is a much bigger quad than this this teeny little thing. Um, uh, I have a uh, the full size DJI air unit in a uh, in a three inch Acrobrat, uh, and that 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 fit in there pretty well. But those are three inch quads and lot more lot more room in them but uh, at the way the miniaturization of these electronics are, are going and keep going uh, I don't think it's going to be too long before uh, we'll have uh, a DJI digital version of a Tiny Hawk 2 or something like that <laughs> anyway Colin thanks for coming in I'm going to go ahead and give you a uh, a blue wrench my friend so you fit in with the rest of us and and welcome so anyway over here what we got is this is the VTX right here okay just this little this little tiny square board and just to t show you the size of this thing um, here's a penny so it's about the size of a penny I know sometimes when you when you're watching this stuff uh, on on the uh, on the screen and it's all blown up like this it uh, you lose you lose the sense of scale but uh, but uh, these things are really really tiny so what I got to do first here because I'm going to be powering up the quad I'm going to take the props off right after I bring in Mr. New York himself <laughs> that's one way of putting it <laughs> good evening sir hey how are you good good Doing thanks well. for coming in carlos you finished your dinner oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i wanted to make sure and my wife just had her uh gallbladder removed so i want to make sure she was taking care of them all what kinds of good stuff oh okay cool it's a twig collins is that what they call this a twig <laughs> i don't know what size it is it's no, a, no, it's Toothpick. It's a, well, it's it's a it's about that. Some toothpicks I think might be a little larger than this, but this is uh, about seventy grams all up without a battery. It's uh, uh, one hundred fifteen millimeter wheelbase, mm -hmm. two and a half two and a half inch props. So it it really is tiny. Like I said, when I when I put the penny over the uh, over the VTX and it covered it up completely, it it, it gave you a scale and I. And I brought that penny in here just for that purpose because I wanted to, to show you guys the actual size of this new Rush Tiny Tank uh, 350 milliwatt VTX. You're not going to believe it. <laughs> You're not going to believe it. 350. So anyway, you said? that's uh, what's that? 350. 350, the new one. Yeah. Wow. 350 that's milliwatt. That's cool. And let those me take clear the, plates came with the quad. Yeah, you got uh, you like got two it. you got two two sets of them too. They sent you eight props, and they're these little little screwing uh, jobs. So, are you familiar with somebody called Kebab FPV? Oh yeah, yeah. He he's a well, he's he, a, he, like, he makes these things, and he says the ideal uh, quad is seventy six grams. I think so. You're right there. I mean, yeah, the, I'm sorry. The ideal toothpick. Let me toothpick. Yeah, Kebab is the is the guy. I think that if I'm not mistaken, that actually coined the term toothpick. Maybe. Just, like, not, yeah. just yeah. like the term tiny whoop. Right. Is the name, is the name, is, is, is a particular company actually coined that for their product. It's, it's like saying Kleenex, you know, instead of tissue. Correct. People, or people even refer Vaseline. to Vaseline or, yeah. ch or chiclets, but people, uh, <laughs> people tend to coin coin the generic a generic name from the first guy to ever come out with with a product okay so so Mitch I missed a little bit you're gonna change the VTX that's what's yeah, going I'm gonna on take gonna okay. take this little uh, little 25 milliwatt VTX out of here that um, that Jeff is, Henderson uh, just joined us hello Jeff I, I see the hi Jeff how are you good to see you uh, hasn't been here before so uh, evidently knows my name <laughs> well Jeff let's uh, 
let's go ahead and give you a, a blue wrench so you'd be one of the gang and you won't be a new guy the next time you come in. Well, we got uh, 11 people in the house. I don't, I don't guess that's, uh, that's too bad for, for this, seeing as it's uh, pretty much FPV specific and so much of the community, Carlos, that, that, that our, most of our friends are, are not FPV guys, or at least not yet. We're trying to convert them. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're, Mitch, we're you know trying. what? Uh, another option to FPV or to start is this Emax Interceptor. Have you heard about it, that little car? Oh, the car. <laughs> yeah, I have heard about it, but I... I have one. Do you? I don't know. I don't know. Uh... Oh, Jeff, right. Jeff's been... I know who he is. Yeah, Jeff's been... Commun has been uh, uh, commenting large long comments about uh, about uh, the uh, the binary and we we kind of corresponded a little bit in in the comments on one of the videos yeah jeff good thanks for coming in buddy uh, this is a lot smaller than the binary right here but uh, these these tiny things are great to fly but they're a challenge to work on because they're they're so small and you got to really got to have either good eyes or good glasses so what i need to do is i need to remove this uh, this VTX and and what I had going on here was um, I had put a tie wrap in for the antenna so I have to remove that first and I want to try to do this without actually cutting antennas or anything like that so we'll remove that and slide it out of there and now I can remove that piece of heat shrink and then I had tie wrapped the small little VTX and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. The problem with zooming in, it makes it better for you guys to see what I'm doing, but I tend, I can get out of the frame real easily. So just I'll yell, at me, yell at me, yeah. Carlos, if I get out of the frame. Above so and beyond your own, Jim also joins Oh, hey, hey, Jim, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. Jim's my neighbor. So uh, there's a piece of sticky tape holding this on and I always found the best way to remove sticky tape rather than try to pull it up is to twist it sideways. It pops right out. You, 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 the stuff pops right off of it. So we, we'll, we'll get rid of that. Joe C. And, just joined us. Ah, uh, hiya, Joe. Sorry. And then, what, and then what we got here, no, that's okay. What we got here is the wire. And I, I thought this wire was really tight. They, they, they needed to make it about a quarter inch longer. They didn't and it just allowed this thing to, to fit on there. But it plugs into the uh, to the controller board, way down in here. So unfortunately, to get to it, I'm going to have to take take the drone apart. So what I want to do is take the stand off. There's three three screws that hold the whole top canopy, and the uh, flight controller is actually mounted in the top canopy. So yeah, that was odd. That was a different. It, well, it, it is, but it makes sense when you're trying to cram that much mm -hmm. into this small of a package. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we will take that out, and then this will lift right off of here, he said. Drone Days joined us as well. Uh, just oh, let you know. okay. I said hello. <laughs> the, uh, the crowds are showing up here. Pretty soon we'll have a thousand, view a thousand viewers. Okay. So here it is. The receiver is going to stay right where, where it is. And the receiver, you see, was sitting between the controller board, which is up here in the, uh, in the lid there. But unfortunately, in order to get the, uh, to get the, uh, and what I want to do is, since this is an RXSR and it has a plug-in, I'm going to unplug the receiver so that it doesn't get pulled because the two and the two antennas from the receiver are, are heading over here towards these legs, if you can see that, and uh, that'll keep this from going anywhere. So I've got three, three screws holding this tiny little flight controller board in here. So we'll get rid of them. Mel joined us, uh, Mitch. Oh, hey, Mel. How you doing? And uh, I'll keep a glance on the uh, panel on the green room, see if anybody comes in, but I may not catch you right away. But uh, any of you guys that uh, would like to come in who aren't on my mailing list and didn't get an invitation, just uh, 
let me know in the chats and if you don't mind put your email in there and I'll I'll send you a link okay so now that little flight controller board is going to come out of here and the camera is plugged into it but the VTX is plugged in right here in the side so we're going to unplug that okay so that is the VTX that was in there and uh, a little 25 a little 25 milliwatt job unbelievable how little that thing is well here this is where I why I brought this in to show you yep look at that <laughs> that's crazy that that kind of puts it in scale doesn't it yeah. And then, and, and then if I don't have big hands, luckily, but imagine if you had big hands and big fingers. I mean, there's, there's my finger. <laughs> so when, when you're working, when you're working on these things, they're, they're just, they're just so tiny. But what I'm going to do, since this wire was so short, is I'm going to go ahead and fabricate right before your eyes, a whole new cable for the VTX. And then leave this whole leave this whole little unit here intact, just the way it is. And maybe I could use it on something someday. Maybe uh, maybe if I do build a little car or or a, a a quad just for flying around indoors or something like that. But it would be a shame to tear this up and break it. It is a nice little VTX and it does have smart audio. So so we're going to put that aside right now. And. Uh, we're going to get the uh, the new one out and I want to show you where are you getting your stuff from I got this this one from race day quads okay okay so there is is the new one <laughs> I I can't get over the size of these things now that that's 350 milliwatts that according to the, to the tests, the there you go. The, according to the tests that, that I have seen on this, it actually puts out 50 to 100 milliwatts more at 350 than the 350. It's over four, it was over 400 even after it got hot. So <laughs> I think that that one is about the same size, maybe a little even narrower than the, than the first one that came in. Look at that. So that's why when I saw the size of this thing, I said, wow, that's, that's going to fit, uh, that's going to fit right in there. And, Where are the cables? Well, there are none. There are oh, solder geez. pads. There are solder pads. Wow. If you can see them. <laughs> yeah, right. How many there do you have are. to solder on that? Oh, there they yeah, are. Solder four wires onto this thing. God bless you. And it's actually got solder pads on the other side too, on, on this side over here. Uh, so there's a total of, uh, of one, five, six, there's a total of nine solder pads all together on this, on this little thing because you can, if you don't have a flight controller and you're just hooking the camera up, you can hook the camera up to this side. But the four wires that I need to hook up are going to go are going to go to to this side here, and there's some nice uh, graphic instructions that you you can uh, find on online that show you show you which pads to do. But what I need to do is I need to make oh, and they also give you this this clear piece of of heat shrink to go over it because it's got one of these UFL connectors, these teeny little antenna connectors that have a tendency to pop off and break real easily. So when you snap that UFL connector onto the socket, which is way over here in the corner right there, um, when you snap that on, you put the heat shrink over it to, uh, and that hopefully will lock it in and keep it from moving. But I am going to have to take this little teeny antenna and do the same thing like I did before and, and put it on a, uh, and put it on a, uh, a, a tie wrap to, to firm it up. They even give you four, four little wires but uh, they're not, uh, I'm not going to use those because I have to make wires with a plug. So let me back out of this thing here. 
could be a surgeon, a microsurgeon one day. You, you almost have to be with, <laughs> with some of this tiny little stuff. And, and the one thing that I don't have, I have a lamp with a magnifying glass in it, but the bulbs aren't that bright. And uh, I need I need to get one of these really, really big, uh, I need to get one of these really big things mm -hmm. like jewelers use with the fluorescent tube around it and a big magnifying glass in the center and a big long arm that I can that I can bring in. So let's see what I, we got going on. I wouldn't here. attempt that. <laughs> <laughs> I would not attempt yeah. that. You're brave. Well, that's the that's the challenge, man. That's the that's the mm -hmm. cha that that's that's half the fun. But uh, this is such a fun little drone that uh, I thought it would be great if I could fly it out much further without the video going fuzzy or, or going to hell on me. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get uh, one of those handy dandy little kits that I got from Amazon. Oh, and uh, get all get myself organized here. So there's the there's the transmitter. There's the antenna. And what I need to do is I need to make a four pin connector like this one with a black, red, yellow, and white wire. Okay, so I bought this kit on Amazon, and there's a link in the description of the video. And it's it's a uh, um, one point oh millimeter spacing socket kit, but it comes with a whole slew of silicone wires that already have the, the, the teeny tiny little pins crimped on them. And these pins are so small that, uh, smaller than anything that I want to crimp. I can crimp the pins on the bigger, on the bigger uh, stuff. But to, to crimp one of these tiny little, you see, see the size of that little end on there? Look at that. Yeah. And when you look at, uh, when you look at the average crimping tool, <laughs> right there, you can see that that would be a real challenge with with one of these big, big crimping tools. So, uh, it's a, it's kind of a smart thing that they actually sell sell this. Uh, and this whole kit was I don't know ten bucks something like that. But it comes with a whole slew of wires. They even give you a tweezers with it, which. I didn't even realize was in there, but they give you, they give you tweezers. JDS Flying Canuck, or as I call it. Oh, how you doing? How you doing, my friend? Good to see you. Okay, so now with all this spaghetti I got going on here, I, <laughs> I need to find me a yellow wire. So here's a yellow wire. And uh, I need a red wire. Do they give me any red wires here? Are there any red wires in here? No, there's black wires. There's a black wire. I need a white wire. Do I have any? I have, there's a white wire. And it appears I'm going to have to use orange instead of red. Uh, close enough. Okay. So, and I need a four pin connector right here. And that should be that should be the same size, exactly the same connector as this connector here. And it is. Okay. So, the first I wouldn't, wire... I wouldn't even attempt that, Mitch. <laughs> the first yeah. wire is, is black. Now, these pins here, 
if you turn them, I don't know if you guys can see it with the zoom, but if you turn it sideways like this, you see the, the flat part on the end? Right, that little, that little flat yeah. part right there, yeah. right there. Well, that's where the hole is, where the pin goes. And on the top or backbone of this thing, where the wire goes in, there's a there's if you if you were to take your fingernail and run it down you'd feel a tiny little notch a tiny little bur barb sticking out and that little barb is what uh, hooks under these tiny little tabs that are in the pin so you need to make sure that that little barb is facing up towards the side of the plug where the pins are and the black one goes into the very left like this, and then you push it in. And it, it, it should snap in. Mitch, the plug is, is there a top or a bottom or not? Yeah, there is. There now is. Sometimes I, I, sometimes I use a little end of a knife or something to get in there and give it that last little push. See, it didn't catch under the under. It didn't catch under this little. So the other way of doing it is you you, you lift that little tab up a little bit, and then you put then you push this in. I'm gonna use the other end. Now these wires they actually give you a pin on both sides, and I only I only need a pin on one side. So. And I'm wondering if this if this tweezers that they give you has a sharper point on it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Look at the point on this thing. Whoops. Mitch, Where? do you feel a click or like a little Yeah, anything? you'll feel a little click. But this okay. this tweezers has got a a much sharper point, so I can I can use it to push this in. There we go. There we go. So that's in. Okay, so the first the first one is in. The second one is red. So we will put get some of the superfluous stuff out of the way. We'll put the red one. This in. is the easy part, Mitch. Now the other part is the soldering. No, the soldering is easier than this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But this uh I thought you guys might like to see this because this is some of what you have to deal with if you're uh, if you're actually working on these little things. Yeah, that little tweezers, I wish I'd have found that before. That is, that's got such a sharp point on it that uh, it lets you grab the wire right behind the, the, the metal part and push it in. Okay, it's then we have a... Go to your left. There, there you go. go. Oh, yeah, okay. right there. Sorry. All right. So, no, that's okay. I, I, I hate to talk and you guys don't see what I'm doing. So there's the yellow wire. So then we'll take. So Mitch, in, in theory, this is the same process for a balance lead, right? Yeah, but the balance lead is huge compared to these. No, I understand, but it's the same idea as far as the Yeah, but here, here, there's the difference. There's a balance lead. Oh, so I look see. At the, yeah, look yeah, at yeah. the size. Look at the <clears> size. I mean, when we're talking about stuff this small and the magnification that I have here with this zoom camera, Mm -hmm. that's 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 the balance lead so yeah there's uh pins stick in there except in this case there's a you actually would to get a pin out on a balance lead you would actually put something sharp and push down on a little tab right there on the end and then it would it would pull out whereas these pull little up. pins have those tiny little flapper things on them so now we got the white one which goes in the end Flea bag production is asking, how much is that kit? I need one myself. Description. Uh, I think you can find it in the description. What, 10, 11 Yeah, bucks? I've got I've got all these different screw kits and connector kits in uh, in in the uh, in the description in this video, I think. <laughs> this particular kit. And I'll let me take a second and describe to you how you tell these different connectors apart because there are differences in these connectors. And 
Okay, so, oh, why does that one look stupid? That's a bad, it looks like a bad pin crimped on the end of that. So let's turn around and use the one on the other side. Let's see. Uh, uh, am I in the frame here at all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Right there. So let's put that in. Yeah, that that other one had a very strange. Oh, there you something. go. Free crimped. Uh, let's see if I can do this right. Something doesn't look something doesn't look right. Uh, on on the way it it's set, these other three are in there okay, but this white one. Something wasn't right about it. I think that's it. Flea bag, check that out. Which one? I uh, I try to copy and paste your uh, kit. It's These the, are uh, the the pre pre crimp cables and SH one connectors. S yeah, SH that's the kit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm doing secretary stuff here too. Hey, it's it's good. <laughs> it's good. But that just doesn't, that, that one's just not going in there. There's something, there might be something wrong with this, this particular plug, but uh, I'm going to get another, I'm going to get it and throw that white wire away and get another white one. Because that is the video, that's the video wire. You, you know, you definitely want, uh, you don't want that to be, to be wrong. You know, these things are all called uh, JST connectors. The number that you, you see, Out of JST 2.0, JST 1.0, is the spacing between the pins. Mitch, go, to, go to your right, Mitch. Okay. There you go. So the spacing between these two pins right here, where I have the tweezers, is one millimeter. On a JST 2.0 connector, the space this is this would might be a 3.0 but Can't that's see. that's how they measure it the spacing between the pins on on the connector there you okay? go okay spacing between the holes and there is there's a couple of different kinds of really tiny ones um there's a 1.5 and a 1 and from the outside they look the same so you got to be very careful when you're using these tiny little plugs on these flight controllers that you're not trying to cram one that has a, a one and a half millimeter spacing into one that into a one millimeter socket. So these are the most common ones that are actually used in, uh, these are the most common ones that are used in flight controller boards are the one, are the one millimeter uh, one millimeter ones. So let's, uh, I don't know if you, it, 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 am I on the board there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you when you're not. <clears throat> okay. Art's place. Art just joined us. Brother oh, Art. <clears throat> Brother Art. How you doing, my friend? See, we get to see a lot of Art and a lot of Lloyd over the weekend. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. All right. <coughs> I think, oh, why? You know, something, something is not, something is not, working properly with this particular plug. I'm Why don't put, you take I'm that same wire and put it in a new plug, see if it feels Well, good. I'm putting it in, this N1, oh. and, uh, and it just doesn't look right, because you can see the tiny little metal In the end, there. Uh, and it just doesn't look right. It looks like not, nah, there's something, something wrong with this, with this particular plug that I got here. It, it, it's, it's, I'm gonna throw it away and get another one, start over. So I'm gonna take all of these wires out of the plug and uh, 
there was something wrong with with that uh, with that the plastic it had a had something that was forcing the the uh, the connector up up a little too high fortunately I, I don't think I could use all these plugs that are in this kit in a lifetime of building these things so so let's uh, let's see here uh, make sure we got the right the right colors so that's my sample and uh, Let's start with the white one this time. What do you think? <laughs> the one that was giving me trouble. Right, the headache. The headache one. So that goes in to this end. Feels better? Well, it looks right. Yeah, that looks right in this plug. That other plug was ramping as I pushed it in. It was kind of ramping it, uh, ramping it up upwards out of the, out of the little, the tiny little slot. If it, you could look in the end of these plugs, and you can see the tiny little bit of metal right up here where I'm pointing. See it? A little bit to your right. Tiny you little are. bit, tiny little bit of metal you see from the end, the tip of that thing, and you have to see all four of them. If you look at this plug, you can see. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's four silver ends of these plugs that you can see by looking down into those tiny little holes. So that's white, and this is yellow. Out of screen. There you go. Okay. And of course, these are the smallest connectors that we have to deal with. The bigger connectors are much easier to deal with than these. But I still don't see that that's, that particular one's in all the way. So I'm going to lift the little tab up and then push it in all the way. And then push the tab down. Okay, so that's white and yellow, and the next is red. <laughs> this should not have taken me this long to install pins on one plug. Yeah, Murphy was around. Well, you have a box of like 50 of those at a screen, a little to your left. Well, yeah. a box of 50 of what? These little plugs? Of that particular one, and you picked the one that gave you the headache. It came, yeah, there was, there's about you know 20 I mean, of each. They give you an assortment of two pin, three pin, four pin, five pin, six pin, seven pin, and they give you about 20 of each in this kit. Plus, I think they give you 100 wires with uh, pins on both sides. Now, most of the time, you're going to be soldering something, so you're going to cut it to length. Right. Gets involved. Yeah, uh, well, you know, I could have... Uh, Little used, uh, okay, I'm 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 going to zoom out. So right. I uh, pretty much done with that. Yeah, and I, I I want you to see what I'm doing, but I want to I want to make sure I got it done right, which means I want to put I have to put it in a position where I can best see it, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which may not be right under the camera. Okay, no, we can see it. it. Looks good. All right, so there you go. So that plug has to fit into 
there's a connector on this board here that says VTX, and I'm trying to remember which one it was. It was this one right here. And it snapped in and none of the wires popped out. Super. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to make it longer, a little bit longer than the other cable was. So let's put the other cable on here. And let's cut these about a half inch longer. Okay. So there's, so there's what I have to solder to the tiny little to the tiny little uh, to this tiny little thing now there's some there's some stuff here called uh, blue tack mm -hmm. we talked about this stuff before you buy it in a package it's like uh, stiff silly putty okay and this is one of the greatest soldering aids known to man because what you do is you just take this and you stick it down and then you take your teeny little whatever you're soldering and you stick it in and it holds it <laughs> how cool is that see that and yep. holds it holds it in place now I turn the soldering iron on and uh, hope for the best <laughs> yeah hope for the best and now I need to strip Need to strip these wires. You do that with a tool or with your thumb? No, uh, I do it with uh, with a little pair of uh, side cutters. Okay. With a with a very with a very delicate touch, so as not to uh, not to cut the wires, but just to pull the insulation off. You don't really squeeze the pliers. You just Squeeze it enough to grab onto the insulation, but not not really cut it, because this stuff is is soft enough that uh, it it, it pulls. You could probably do it with your fingernails, but it's easier to do with this. All right, so now I've got four wires there, and the first thing I want to do. Mitch, where can you buy that Blue Tech? Uh, Amazon, Amazon. I think I, I think I have a link to all of these supplies somewhere in my uh, in the description of this look. video. But you can, but you can. It's just called Blue Tech, and uh, mm -hmm. you you can buy it on Amazon. All this stuff is is cheap individually. But you're gonna, you know, if you want to set up a complete workshop, you're gonna um, you're gonna spend a couple hundred bucks on all these various odds and ends. But chances are, once you have one, you never have to reorder it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just tinning these tinning these wires. Any possibility you missed Blue Tech on your list? I might have. Okay, I'll look at look at a, look look on Amazon. All right, so I've got these things tinned, and I always like to tin them a little long and then cut them back just a tiny little bit. Are you able to see what I'm doing here? Yes, sir. And and I'm looking at Amazon. <laughs> I'm trying that's what, get, for, that's what you get for being my assistant on know, FPV workshop night oh Art's in the chat Art can come in and help he's in the he's in the uh, in the thing and uh, you know what I what I why didn't you tell me that I should have done this so that everybody can see what I'm doing <laughs> you're the boss I'm just uh, oh, you know. I'm not paying attention anyway here he is my friend wait a minute Art Hold on. Don't say a word. Don't say a word. Now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wasn't thinking, Carlos. They don't need to be seeing your face. They need to be seeing what I'm doing. I agree. Yeah. I'm totally I mean, right. this is pro is, isn't this professional show business after <laughs> all? <laughs> yeah, we try. We try. <laughs> we try, yeah. All right. So I got the wires tinned. Uh -huh. And now I'm going to bring them around here, and I need to solder them too. Uh, and let me zoom in, and I'm going to try to keep this in so you can see the uh, right 
see me actually soldering these things. That's as far in as it zooms, okay? Okay. And you can see the, uh, the tabs there. And yep. the, the, one, the one on the end here says VTX. Yeah. And this one says CAM. We don't need that. And this says data. That's the wire that goes to the um, uh, mm -hmm. smart audio and ground and five volts. Okay. So I got to make sure that I know which is which. So is the yellow the video and the white the smart audio? Or is the white the video and the yellow the smart audio? And I'm trying to find that out. Red is plus, ground. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you're magnifying glass. Get out my jeweler's loop here. Yeah, or borrow Carlos glasses. <laughs> I mean, plus my you know what, Carlos video is video out. is the video is the plus minus video out is the third one over and the third one over is yellow so yellow is the video wire white is the smart audio wire okay so now we will if i tilt that up you guys can see better what i'm doing right yeah. so let me let me try to tilt it up so you can actually yeah. see the there we go good job okay so the uh Mitch, work on your cuticles next week. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. So what I'm doing here is just putting a little bit of solder on the tab. Yeah. And we need data. A little more. There and you we go. need. Uh, we need you know ground. Yep. Wow, that's crazy. And yeah. we need five volts. Yeah. There you go. Oh, 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 you got a little bridge going there. No, I don't. Okay. Okay. Mitch John Days wants to know why you're using that particular tip on your soldering iron. Okay, this tip here, the chisel tip, uh, for for me, is without a doubt the best tip to use for tiny little soldering because you have that sharp pointed chisel to get right down on the tiniest little things. But if you're soldering something that, like a battery lead that needs a lot of heat, you got the whole, you got the whole long width of this thing to, uh, to heat it up. But for delicate soldering, this works just as good as like a needle point because it has such a sharp point on it. And I right. found that there isn't very much or, or how small I can't go with the chisel tip. It's right. my favorite my favorite soldering tip of all. So, what we're going to do now? We got solder on the wire. We got solder on the. Uh, we got solder on the. Uh, on the uh, pads. So the first one we're going to do is the VTX. That's the video. So that would be the yellow wire. So we're going to. We're going to touch the yellow wire to there. Heat heat it all up. Yep. Don't. Well, you got a nice day hand. So there's the yellow wire. Then we're going to have the data is the white wire, which goes right to here. And then we have ground. Mm -hmm. Goes to here. And five volts. He is steady, right, Art? Goes yeah, he is. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So there you go. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to. Well, I got that goop into my I got that goop into my uh, antenna. Yeah. Yeah, you hate to have goop in your antenna. I will get that Mitch, out. You're there. able to see that the soldering is like one pad is not touching the other. Your eyes are good enough. Like yeah. Uh, no, I'm going to take my jeweler's loop. Ah, okay. 
and check that right now. Okay. But what what you but it, it's hard. It's actually hard to bridge solder pads, as you've seen when I tried to bridge solder pads. Um, what you see is the flux is shiny. See. Uh. And because you got that shiny flux, it makes it look like sometimes it's bridged. So uh, the first okay. thing I do is I'll, I'll take I'll take a jeweler's loop and uh, and take a quick look through the jeweler's loop. These pads are so close anyway. Yeah. Yeah. They don't look. They don't look bridged. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sharp point of this, and I'm just going to yep. make sure there's just kind of brush between them. This, I mean, you, you see, this thing is just tiny as hell. Of course. These are the kind of boards that I, uh, oh wow, with the green screen it makes it all, oh wow, cool. What's that? Oh, I'm, I've got a PC board that I wanted to show you, but I'll grab another one that's, that's red. You can see that, that's the kind of stuff that I do. For. These are effect pedals for guitars. They're much bigger than this, aren't they? Oh yeah, they are. Okay, that looks good. And a lot of times, uh, what I like to do also is just take a, to get that flux off of there, I'll take a little alcohol and a toothbrush. You know, oh, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say something. Never mind. But, there we go. Okay. So Looks now we good. got that, mm -hmm. and uh, then we, this is the receiver, so we'll plug that in, because before I put this all together, I'm going to test it, make sure it I works. I was going to say, you're going to test that first? Yep. <laughs> yeah, so let's get the, uh, let's get the plug back in the receiver, and... Uh, don't want to plug the VTX in without an antenna. Why? Why? It'll burn it up. Okay. Ooh. Okay. That, yeah, that's, that's true. Point. Any any video transmitter, Carlos, you always want to uh, have an antenna on it. Oh, that's a good strong snap plug there. Okay, so we got the V. We got the antenna. Right. Let's see here. We got the antenna. And we have uh, the video transmitter. And I didn't put the heat shrink on it yet, but what I am going to do is I'm going to take this whole mess over and plug it into the computer. All right. And set up, set the VTX settings up in Betaflight first. So if everything's working right, it'll automatically go to the right channel when I, when I turn it on. You, you want to be out of camera, right? Yeah, because I'm going to go to beta flight here. Yeah. I'm going to open beta flight. I hear myself. I'm going to go over to uh, to beta flight. Uh, and I'm going to connect. I'm going to go to advanced settings. I'm <clears> going to go to video transmitter. Oh no, this is 3.5.5, so this does not have VTX stables. So everything I do on this one, I have to do in, in the uh, CLI, okay? So I have to type get VTX. And I get these different settings here for VTX. And it says, uh, loud range, blah, 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 OSD channel here. VTX band equals four. VTX channel equals three. Okay, well, that's, that didn't change because that's what I had set up from before. That's Fat Shark channel three. Fat yeah. Shark Band Channel 3. Okay. I want to set my VTX power to 3. Right. And, and I, think, I think that 
if I'm not mistaken, and let me let me really quick just take a look at the uh, the specs on this thing. Um, Three would be the highest. Be the highest. Hold on a second. Let me get let me get this over here, and we'll see. Uh, we got 25, 100, 200, and max. Okay, so that would be one, two, three, and four. So three would be 200, four would be 350. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, this just shows you all the different ways you can wire it. But uh, mm -hmm. all right, so that that's that. So now we'll go back to uh, go back to Betaflight. And I want to set uh, VTX power. So we'll copy this and paste it down into the command line and say three, because 200 milliwatts is going to be where I want to start with this thing before I try to bump it up to 350. And right. hit enter. And why VTX is that? Power equals to unknown command. Wait a minute. What? Oh, I have to say set. Set VTX power equals three. All right, so VTX power is set to three. Then what I want to do is I want to set my VTX low power disarm. Is on. Now what that means, just what it says, when it's disarmed, the VTX automatically is changed to its lowest power setting. So it won't overheat sitting on the ground with no airflow around it. Right. Okay, right. so by saying set VTX low power disarm set to on, that means when I first plug the battery in, the VTX will only be putting out 25 milliwatts. When I arm the quad, whatever setting I have here set for power, and let me now, after I did that type, get VTX again and, and make sure that all of them are right. So we have the band is four, the channel is three, the power is three, which is 200 milliwatts. The disarm is set to on, and I type save, and that reboots the quad and saves all those settings. Okay, so the so that's set that's set correctly now. Cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I want to take this thing back over to the table here, and I'm going to turn on I'm going to turn on my my receiver. Okay, I have a receiver set up that you guys can see. So what I'm going to do is turn on my radio transmitter here. Welcome to OpenTX. Select this model. Select a... D16 receiver beta flight quad, which is what that is. Okay. I want to um, plug it in to a battery. You have goggles set? Or a screen? I do it. It's working. Nice. Okay, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what I see here. That's what I see. And if I take the lens cap off the camera, Helps. there I am. <laughs> oh, nice. It's clear. There I am. Oh, yeah, so cool. that's what's, that's what's uh, coming out of the, uh, of the VTX. And you'll notice... And I'll put the lens cap on so we, because it's more important for me to read what it says. Right. You'll notice that over there, it, right in the center at the bottom, it says F3 colon 1. That's different. That, that means that it's in low power. Now, if I arm the quad, that changed to a 3. Did you see that? Yeah. Right in the center, it changed to F colon 3 colon 3. If I disarm the quad, uh, now it's going to show me the status, but it it'll it 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 will go back to uh, mm -hmm. 25 milliwatts. So and that that screen will go away after a few seconds. It'll take right. me back to the to the main screen. But uh, arm 
is 300 milliwatts. All the little motors are running away over there. All right, so uh, so that works pretty good. That works pretty good. Cool. And uh, thanks to the magic of OBS and all my setup. Remember when I flew around the house and you guys could see it? Well, now I've got it set up so that you can actually see that what's coming off the receiver of any of these things mm. directly into OBS. It works pretty cool. 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 Yeah. So let's unplug it. And it is working. So the surgery was successful. <laughs> now the Humpty Dumpty put it back together. Now I got to do why this. Did you, why did you decide the 300 and, or the 200, not the 350, you said? Well. <sighs> Any particular reason? Are you from, are, well, yeah, 350 milliwatts is, is not that much more than 200 milliwatts. Okay. Uh, 200 milliwatts is a lot more than 25 milliwatts. But when oh, you I get to, because it's, it's a uh, logarithmic type of result from power. Basically, 10 times the power gives you twice the result. So going from 25 to 200 gives you about twice the range, twice more distance. Mm -hmm. Going from 200 to 350 might give you 2.3 times 25 milliwatts. Going to 1,000 might give you three times or less than three times the distance. That's why these guys have got their DJI systems. There's a hack where you can get 1,200 milliwatts out of the DJI digital system. And the guys who do it, they put it... In, they fly to 1200 and, and then they fly to 700 and, and invariably they say, I don't know, I just, uh, I just um, couldn't see that much difference. Well, there, there isn't that much difference. And it's the same thing, it's the same relationship of horsepower to performance. In order to get to twice the performance of 100 horsepower, you need 1000 horsepower. You know, to get twice the twice the performance, that's uh, that's a logarithmic type of, of relationship, and uh, decibels. And also, it would use more batteries, so you're actually saving a little bit of. Uh, yeah, but the the VTXs use such a small amount of battery that in these cases you wouldn't oh, really? you wouldn't okay. notice. It might knock a couple seconds off the flight, but that mm -hmm. would be about it. Yeah. Uh, these, this VTX draws like 200 milliamps, okay? But uh, that's a, a 200 milliamps over, you know, when you think about it, it's 200 milliamps per hour. So mm. in the five minutes that it's turned uh, on during this flight, it's it's not, it's gonna draw yeah, what, yeah, 10, yeah, 50, yeah, yeah. 10, 15 milliamps out of the 650 battery that you got. So yes. that's not that much, that's not that much of a factor. Yeah. Yeah. So, so at any rate, let me go. VTX power as the uh, tiny hooks now. Well, if I keep that's it set to, to set to 200, yeah. Right. Now oh, what I need to do is I need to uh, get this heat shrink on it. And I had the heat shrink here. And as usually happens in these things, stuff takes a walk. Where did that piece of heat, that clear piece of heat shrink that... Uh, that they gave me, did it walk off to? I thought I set it right over here on the, on the side of this thing, but so Art, have you had enough of being online yet this weekend? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. man. Well, now that I'm off this week, I'll probably do a couple live streams during. Do some week. more live streams. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah why not? Wine of the little whoop. That would. Be yeah. That, you know what? That's what I was going to do too. I can't believe that. Uh, I can't believe. You can't. That I can't find that little piece of heat shrink. 
Hmm. I mean, what are the odds? Well, let me yeah. get this. Let me get what this little thing. Let me get. The, let me get this little thing screwed in here mm. first. So the front of the quad, there's an arrow on here. I think. Oh God, I can't remember. Did this go? Oh, the clue is this little cutout for the. Uh, for the USB port. So that's that's the way it goes. I remember putting this thing together the first time was a pain. Mm -hmm. There's the VTX which has to come under here. All right, so what I need to do is I'm gonna need to take the plug out and run it run the wire through this hole here nice. last time last time the wire was on the same side as the antenna but now it's on the opposite side so nice. um, but I need I can't do anything until I have that heat shrink mm -hmm. fortunately I do have out in my workshop um, I do have some clear heat shrink but I can't understand for the life of me how that heat shrink piece of tubing that I had here I could have gotten up and walked away. There's the wire. There's the other VTX. There's the stickers. We got stickers, guys. Oh, mm -hmm. everything comes with stickers. Um, there's the bags that the stuff came in, which I can throw away. Uh, I didn't lose my penny. All right. So you guys can uh, you guys can Good entertain. Workshop. You guys can uh, can talk and uh, entertain each other while I run okay. out real quick. I wanted to show Carlos something that I got okay. uh, Go ahead. the other day. Let me see, let me see. Okay, I'm coming. Can you see it? Not yet. Oh, I see you. Does he have to allow the share? Oh, I guess he does. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I bought a... Now I'm getting an echo. Why am I getting... I think it's this side or is it you? Because I hear it too. Uh... I'm yeah, I, I, there we go. Testing, testing, testing. I hear it. No, no, no. Okay. Huh. Huh. Because, uh, hmm. yeah, I bought a, a custom quadcopter off of uh, propertyroom.com. And it looks like it's about the same size as the, the deal that uh, Mitch has. What's that? Uh, I, uh, just I just bought a, bought a custom, custom quadcopter off of, of uh, propertyroom.com. Uh, property I was going to sh show the picture of it, but uh, I think... Where is it? Well, I have it in a uh, shared screen, but I can't bring it in. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Hey, Mitch. Hey, Mitch. There, yeah. it there it is. There's an echo. There's an echo. Okay, that's because I'm listening through the speaker here. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know. So I took my I took my headphones off. Uh, gotcha. So you're gonna might get a oh, tiny wow. little echo. That's what you got, Art. Yep. Yep. Nice. Well, that's cute. Yep. Got that for sixty bucks. How big is it? It looks like five inch. I think no. it is. There's the battery. <laughs> and What's, what size is the battery? I can't see how many. Eighteen hundred milliamps. milliamps. Well, that's probably like a, a that's a is it a two S or a three S? Maybe, maybe. I don't know, but here's the bottom of it. It looks like it might be a five inch quad. Yeah. Okay. No. So now, well, 
why don't we let's all let's all hide under a park bench then if Art's going to be flying this beast around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Art, but uh, it's you, a matter of safety. You, you got a little I, bit of you got a little bit of learning to do yet with yeah, your little tiny hook before you start before you tackle that beast. <laughs> Yeah. So I d I do have a piece of heat shrink here. Oh, good. A clear. So I will I will cut it. Mr. Uh, Timeless has joined us. Oh, how you doing? Oh, okay. So let's cut this like this. And. Let's see if this is big enough to, this is actually a better fit than that stuff that they sent with it, which was way too wide. So we're gonna slide this all the way down over the wires here so it gets everything nice and covered. Can you see that? Yep, you're on. And it also, I wanna, I wanna slide it down. Make sure that it, it really clamps that antenna mm -hmm. in there too. So I wanna, Pull it through a little more this way, but I don't want to rip the antenna out of there. So yeah. Let's. There we go. That looks about right. Yep. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So then the only thing left to do get your heat gun or is get the lighter. heat shrink gun. Here it is. Yeah. Description found. <laughs> yep. Heat gun found in the description. Heat gun in the description, twelve twelve dollars at Amazon. Wow. This is a great little heat gun. Yep. Um, for the money. Mm -hmm. So so there we go. Look how look how cool that is. Let me zoom in zoom in on that so you guys can see the mm -hmm. coolness. The coolness. <laughs> you can see Sounds the like coolness. It's like a chewing gun commercial. It is. I mean <laughs> look look how look how cool that is right there. Well, Heat yep. shrunk wrapped up in that nice clear. Looks like it was done in a factory. Yeah, uh, look at machine. that. And that will hold the antenna in there, plus the fact that I'm going to tie wrap the antenna to something. So we need to unplug this from here. Right. Let me back, let me back out a little bit again. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, so we need to unplug this. Nice and snug. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. There. And that plug's going to have to go through this hole here in the uh, in the canopy. And then we're going to plug it back in. Which one of these said VTX again? <laughs> I think this it was one. The, the, yeah, yeah this that one. one. Yeah. Okay, so that's plugged in there. Then this will flip over like this and the USB port will go over here where the cutout is uh. on the side of the case for the USB port. Mm -hmm. And uh, ah, I got to get rid of this. Got to unplug this receiver here. Get it. Get that wire out of the way while I do this. Yeah. Where where's the post? The post is here, here, and there. Okay. And there's little holes there, and there's tiny little, tiny little screws. Screws. Teeny little screws. Yeah. Okay, it's in there. Good.
Oops, no screw there. There's only three, <laughs> three posts, and of course I found I found the one that had no uh, no post under it. There you go. All right, so we got the three screws. The VTX wire is certainly long enough, but we'll that's not, that's okay. There's plenty of room to loop it around in there. Uh, this receiver plug plugs into the receiver right here and the receiver goes there and this is the front of the quad here so mm -hmm. then that little canopy goes on here And here, now this little post is rubber, and when I tighten it down, it puts a little pressure on it. But I flew the last light with it like that. But I think this time I'm actually going to take a little bit of hot glue and uh, put a little tiny dab on top of this screw on the top of this nut up top here to right. keep it keep it from from un, unscrewing if you know right. what I mean good idea you're out of screen not that it matters you use Loctite at all or no yeah but not not in a plastic nut this okay. is a, a plastic nut see so uh I wouldn't use Loctite on that, but I use Loctite right. on all the motor screws. And you could use it on the propeller nuts too, but those things are pretty tight, and I don't think that uh, they're going to come loose with the plastic prop acting like a. Oh, you know what? I didn't notice. Are your propellers screwed on, or they are right? screwed on? Yeah, two little screws. All right, so there that goes there. Mm hmm. The uh, receiver wire is tucked in here under the camera. That's out of the way. The antenna is good. There's your VTX. And uh, the VTX will get mounted right to here with a little piece of that foam tape and then tie wrapped in and then I have to make some kind of a support for this antenna to tie wrap it to. Uh, I mean it's it's on there pretty tight but I, I I don't want it to risk it getting sucked down into the repellers if you know what I mean. Yeah. So uh, lost, lost my uh, lens cap uh. so it is a tiny little piece of this foam tape On there, get a tie wrap and stick it through the uh, through the underneath part. Take the VTX and mount it with the pretty side that says "Rush" facing Ooh. up. What do you think? <laughs> Makes sense. Oh man, that's cool. Look at that. Look how cool that looks with that pretty little brush VTX on there. And then we'll tie wrap that down. Wow. 
voila. Voila. All I need to do is uh, fix the antenna. So now that I got it all together, of course, the next logical thing to do would be to make sure it works. Mm -hmm. So we'll turn and we know the camera's not upside down. I didn't take I didn't take the camera oh, out. That's right. You only did. You only did. I just yeah. the camera was just sitting in the uh, right canopy. in the canopy. Yeah. So uh, I think I did tilt the camera up a little bit somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. That's right. I'll make okay. you go faster. Yeah, I know it. I know. <laughs> I know. That's a, I don't want to go faster. All right. So let's uh, let's let me switch you back over here to the. Uh, to the screen so you can see what the Ooh. what happens when I plug it in. Hey, we just got a super chat. Metro drone. Oh, oh Bill for Metro Drones. Hi, Bill. How you doing? Thanks, man. Thanks a lot. So anyway, I got the little there, I got the little drone here now. I'm, mm. I'm moving it all moving it all around. <laughs> Is that I see in front of me? Yep, that's Marilyn. What's that? I see Marilyn. Yeah, yeah. And here 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 I am sitting here. Mm. There's my green screen. You see the whole. You get the studio tour. Here's the, here's the workbench. See, there's the, there's my soldering iron right there. You see, soldering yep. station, and uh, my toolbox, my tool rack with all mm -hmm. the little tools. And over here is my goggles, and Tiny Hawk. There's the pile Science. of. Oh, the professor. Right? <laughs> this is this is the uh, all the the pile of all the little. Uh, all the little um, packages of connectors and screws and bolts and all that other stuff that right, right. that I have there, mm -hmm. and that's it. That's it's just one little two by four foot work table is all the room that you need to build to build quads. Nice, pretty cool, huh? Good setup. Everything's accessible. Yeah. Hey, this is pretty. This is this is a new way to have a roaming camera for for uh, live screens. Mm -hmm. You just plug in a plug in a little quad and uh, see. Oh, here I am. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun. Man. <laughs> well, it's good that it works. There's a nice nice light on in the thing too. Here, look at this. Mm -hmm. uh, nice nice green light on in there. See it under there? Oh yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. And if I if I start the motors. Now the motors are. It went. The light went red, which means that the power went up. Cool. Okay. So let's unplug the quad. And that's the. Oh, all right. That, yeah, Carlos. I think you should look into something called the Emax Interceptor. It's an RC car that you can fly. Uh, you can drive FPV, and it might get you actually used to the whole. Oh, okay. He's, 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 he's like already 50, got it. He's got a RoboMax. He's got a RoboMax already, for God's sakes. <laughs> oh, that does FPV. <laughs> he could. It's got a yeah. camera in it. <laughs> yeah, it does. Go for it, all right? Yeah, that'd be great. All right. So now the next question is. I, I, I'm going to need to tie this antenna to something pretty stiff, pretty stiff. So if it gets hit, it doesn't uh, pull out that UFL connector, which is fairly, fairly delicate. So let's see how I want to do this. If I bend this up like this, something's got to come off of this, uh, of this thing. And I I may 3D print. <laughs> well, I'm thinking that uh, I I'm trying to think how I might want to mount something in here to uh, to really to really hold it. And, I, and, I, and I'm I'm going to do that after the show because I want to take my time and come up with something that uh, that'll really work and lock that antenna in yeah. at the base at that angle so that it. Uh, and, 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 a, and a tie wrap, the other one I had before was basically just a little tie wrap sticking up and, but that antenna on the other thing was soldered on and it wasn't popping off anywhere, see? Yeah. I don't know if you can see it, but it was, it was actually soldered on to right. there. So, uh, so I will, I will come up with, 
with some kind of a of a mount that maybe mounts underneath in that little slot there comes up and maybe a, a little piece of aluminum or something but that's uh, that's all I really need to do to mm -hmm. make sure that this thing uh, other than that it's done so we can put the props back on so let's make sure we get the right prop take it outside right, night flight night flight yeah <laughs> in the right place hey I'll tell you what guys as soon as the weather uh, the daylight gets to the point where it's still light outside uh, in mm -hmm. a couple months uh, I'm gonna do some live flights on this live stream out the window just Good. sit here at my desk, just fly right out the window, go around, fly outside, and then fly right back in the window. You know That'd what I mean? Cool. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> I've been thinking of doing that from up here on the sixth floor. Same thing. Okay, so this one is props in on this side. Prop in. The right rear, right goes to the right, clockwise, right? <clears throat> well, this is, uh, this is the front right yeah and and all you do all i do is when you're when you're looking at the front the leading edge of the props has to be pointing in you know what i mean so like in mm -hmm. this case over here these are the two leading edges on the inside so the mm -hmm. props are spinning that way I like these screw-in props a hell of a lot better than the press-on props on some oh, yeah. of these smaller, yeah, some of these smaller quads. Okay, so what are those? Uh, Forty millimeter. The props. What's that? The props. Two and, and a half. Two and a half inches. Are they really? Huh. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, that yeah that makes sense. They are. Uh, from the from the center hub to the tip of the prop, thirty two thirty two millimeters. That's sixty four. Thirty millimeters. So they're about sixty millimeters. Yeah, sixty two millimeters. But if I right. measure it in inches, if I measure it in inches, that's an inch and a quarter. Okay. Yeah. Right. That so it's a two sense. and a half, two and a half inch prop. Okay, so that's four of the props. Now we go back this way, and this one goes here. Well, you know what? That actually was easy. Actually, went easier than I thought it was going to go. <laughs> Not understanding that question, John Days. I wonder if being up six flights, oh, it will drop a bit. I see. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't it? Shouldn't make any difference. Yeah, no, the height doesn't. <laughs> shouldn't. I'll try it with my uh, least valuable one first. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Test oh, pilot. I, I saw a video where a guy, I guess he launched it from his balcony or something. And it just went whoop, right down. Really? It went uh, and it smashed right into the ground. All right, guys, mission accomplished. You know, you I did. I did title this show the FPV Workshop, so that's what I thought it might be fun to do. Actually, uh, make like it's a workshop, and sometime in the next century or two, that missing piece of heat shrink will probably show up. <laughs> it's under not, a I think, I think I got a, I think I got a, I'm looking on the floor, I can't see it. I think I got a black hole in here um, <laughs> uh, in this, in this place. I, I must have a black hole in this place. That stuff just disappears. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, uh, what'd you think guys? Yeah. yeah. Did you think it'd ever get back together again after all? Better you than me. <laughs> you, know, you know how this feels like, when you do this? This must be what like a surgeon feels like. Oh yeah. When he, mm -hmm. like a heart surgeon, when he's got every, got you all, all cut open and everything and then sees all that shit laying guts. all over the place. And then, and then he <laughs> figures, man, I gotta, 
somehow put all this crap back together and it's got to work. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, that's pretty neat. I'll tell you, it looks it looks kind of cool with that little Rush mini tank back there. Uh, it's uh, it it is it is it it. I'm sure will make this thing a much better drone to fly. It's such a cool little drone for 89 bucks. So wow. for another 20 bucks, I put a big time transmitter on it, and and of course, un, unless you lose the quad somewhere in the woods or on a roof or never find it again, it, you, you can always use these pieces and parts down the road. If you break this quad, you know you take the VTX off and throw it throw it on another quad, but. Uh, yep. It, uh, I'll let you. I'll let you know. I think it flies pretty good. I do want to upgrade it to uh, to Betaflight 4.1. Mm -hmm. um, it does. It does have some uh, prop wash oscillations. Mm -hmm. I noticed Carlos in it. Uh, not too bad, but uh, fine tune it, it out. Well, it's got 3.5.5 which is, isn't even the latest of the 3.5 series. It went all the way up to 3.5.7 before they went to 4.0, and then they had a series of them, and then it went to 4.1, which it is now. And 4.1 has RPM filtering, which I'm oh, using yeah. in, in a few of my other quads, and, it, and, it, and it, from what I see so far, it's really smooth. And, but this is the uh, smallest. It's kind of uh, part for the course with these little things. Wash, I, to a certain yeah, degree. But, but you should be able to tune them out. I, I don't have mm -hmm. any. I don't think I have any prop wash in my Tiny Hawk. It doesn't seem to. It seems to be pretty solid. But uh, yeah, and it depends uh, what maneuvers I do. I get a little shakiness. Yeah, but I think I might. One of the things about upgrading a um, upgrading the uh, the the software in these things is that. Uh, if you have a problem, you can always very easily go right back to what you had. In other words, if I go in and I go into Betaflight, mm -hmm. I go into the command line interface and I type the command diff, D-I-F-F, -F, all. We went over this last week, but I'll go over it again. If I type diff, all, it'll print out a whole bunch of stuff. And that stuff that it just printed out is every setting that ha that has deviated from the default settings. Okay, so I s way down in the bottom there's a button that says write it to a file. So I write that to a text file and I put it somewhere. And I know that that's uh, Betaflight 3.5.5 settings on this particular Tyro 89. Then I go in and I find the target for that flight controller and uh, the f beta f the 4.1 point whatever the latest version is and I flash it right and uh, there are a few exceptions going from three to three series to the four series that you have to be very careful about not just restoring everything but I do know what what to restore so I, I restore the settings like for the OSD the uh, serial port setting, you know, I'll restore most most of everything, but but I won't restore the PIDs or that kind of stuff because I want the new def the new PIDs from the the four point series defaults. So when I get it all set up in four point one, and and another thing about four point one, it's got RPM filtering. So part of installing RPM filtering uh, is. Uh, um, uh, Drone Day says you save right in Betaflight, not not a file somewhere. No, you save it in a file somewhere. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you. Uh, let me uh, let me hook this little quad up to. Uh, hey Mitch, can I just post that uh, interceptor car for Art to see later? Sure, of course. Right. Of course you can. See this like is you this thing's got a right angle adapter for the uh, for the for the serial port check that out all right when you get a chance okay one, one little car yeah so of course I put 
the little tie wrap I put around the uh, VTX, the uh -oh. tie wrap itself is the, the 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 fat end of it is right exactly where the uh, where the little uh, right angle adapter has to plug in. Right. So now I have to put a different tie wrap in with the uh, bump on the other side. So hang on a second. <laughs> I see fun I mean, divergence has joined us. Hello, John. Oh, how you doing? Good to see you. All right, where did I do with this? Here it is. And uh, we got a plug. I'm going to plug this in. That's the only problem with some of these smaller quads is the... Uh, Everything is small. <laughs> well, the fact that you have to use this this adapter. There we go. Okay, so now we'll go over here to uh, to Beta Flight, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I will plug in the quad. Mm -hmm. And I will connect to the quad, and I will go into my CLI. Mitch, Mel is in the green room. Oh, how'd you see that? Mitch, uh, Mel wrote it. Mel wrote it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I hey, have Mel. to. Yeah. I'm in how your you doing, room. buddy? <laughs> hey, I just, while you're in the middle of all this, check your email and open up the STL file and look at it that I just sent you. Hold on a second. Check my email. Yeah, I just uh, made a, I just made an antenna mount for your drone. Oh, you did. <laughs> and I created the STL file and sent it to you. So tell me what you think. Oh, cool. But I, I'd have to go over to take it to my other computer and and slice it and put it into, uh, to a slicer. I don't have one on this computer. Oh, okay. Oh, but well. that's no, that's great. Thank you so much, Mel. That was very, well, very nice of you there. I'll yeah, describe it to you. It's a, it's a flat pad, shaped like this, with a half cut out mast, a half inch long, sticking out the back of it at a, at fifteen degrees. Cool. It goes right under the VTX. How wide is it? Uh, five millimeters wide. Three millimeters thick, seventeen okay. millimeters long. Oh, that'd be perfect, I think. Yeah. And then um, a fifteen degree angle on the hollowed out mast that you can put it on, slide it out to your antenna, hot glue your antenna in it, and zip tie it with your with your other stuff. Yeah, super. Thank you, just, Mel. Just an idea. No, it's very nice of you. Thank you. Thank while you, you were much. while you were doing all that, I thought, you know what? I could make something in Tinkercad really quick that would work. Well, <laughs> well, that's that's uh, that that's that's super. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. I so, uh, that's what that is. I'll do that, and I'll let you know how it worked out. So okay. where was I? I was I was here. Oh no, you can stick around. We got about another 10, 15 minutes here, or you can go. <laughs> okay. okay. See you. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Take care, man. <laughs> we're 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 just full of options here tonight, aren't we? Okay. Yep. So at any rate, I type the command D I F F A L L and enter. And what this gives me, as you can see, is all the differences between that and and stock. And it also gives me the name up top here of the flight controller. And this is a Matek 411 based flight controller. So now I know what target I need if I'm going to upgrade the firmware on it. And this is 3.5.5, and this is from January of 2019, this version. So this version is really an older, I mean, a year in Betaflight version time is worse than dog years. I mean, it's, I'm just it's gonna uh, say. <laughs> yeah, dog years. Ah, it's nice. ancient. I mean, it works and it flies great. But yeah. I would need all of these auxiliary settings, and I would, uh, I would, um, <clears throat> I would not do the uh, uh, the PIDs. I would use the start with the standard PIDs. Uh, I mm -hmm. would uh, maybe use the rates. I probably would wouldn't would probably reset most of it up 
except for the auxiliary switches and the OSD layout. But right down here in the corner, Drone Days, is where you save this off. And it says Save to File. So I would just click that. And I would find a place, for example, to, to put it. And I have um, a subfolder called Drone Stuff. And here I have flight controllers. And then I would, I would actually create a, a folder for the uh, uh, Tyro 89 Maytec 411. Mm -hmm. And I go into that, into, I'm in that folder here, the tirade and I may take 411 and say save it. So now in that folder, I've got all this saved. Mm -hmm. uh, if I need to put this particular flight controller back to this version and make mm -hmm. it exactly like it is now, before I decided I wanted to improve it, and for some reason my improvements don't really <laughs> actually improve it, um, then I would... Uh, simply go back into Betaflight, reflash version 3.5.5, cut and paste that entire file that I created and saved off on my hard drive back into the command line of the uh, CLI, hit enter, and then save it. And then, theoretically, and I've done it before and it does work perfectly, I would have exactly the quad that I set up exactly the way I have it set right now. So, uh, not in the machine. What's going on? Are, 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 the guys, are the guys behaving in the chat? Or are they yes, I, I'm, they're all 100%. Or are they, or are they all make, giving you a hard time? Not at all. <laughs> all good. Everybody's anyway, cooperating. That's, and you're that's, uh, <laughs> that's how we do that. So, so, I will take a look at Mel's... Uh, little antenna mount file, which was very nice. And th in theory, the way he described it, it ought to really just work out perfectly in there. And I'll print it up in black Mitch, PLA. Yes. Drone Days has a question. What is Blith or B-L-I-F-F? B, I don't know what that is. B-L, where did you I'm hear that? Sure. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he'll expound on it a little bit more. Was it Bliff? It says, I don't know what Bliff is. Yeah. Copy file into command. Hmm. Is that like, like that's lit, dude? Hold on a second here. Let me plug <laughs> this back in. in. Let me plug this back in. Connect. Go back into the CLI. Type in diff. Oh, diff. Oh. Is that what he means to say? Diff, diff. instead of lift? Yes, D-I-F-F. -F, diff. Uh, I gotcha. Which means different. It means it, diff is the uh, uh, I, anything that's different from default. So diff all. Now, you can type diff VTX if you want and just get the VTX commands that aren't default. Any You can type get, say, uh, VTX and it'll get you any command that has the word has the letters VTX anywhere in it. So you can search through all the settings. Now if I just type dump D U M P, that's when I get all the settings. See them all? Look at them all. That's it. That's all the settings. I mean, look at it. Look at all these settings and that's but most of them are default, so they don't see they don't show up in the in the uh, diff dumps. One more question from yes. John. You want me to read it or you read it? Yeah. Uh, oh, Mitch, still getting some vibration on my Tyra 129 footage. Any idea or is it just because I'm using a bad camera? Uh, you know, it could be so many things. It could be it could be a bad tune. It could be props out of balance. It could be the... Uh, the does it happen when you're flying straight and level, John? Is it when you um, do a abrupt maneuver where it might be prop prop wash oscillation? Uh, could be a lot of different things, and you know I'm and I make no bones about it. I'm a year into this, and I am by far no 
expert in tuning these quads yet. I'm, I'm learning and I'm trying to learn as much as I can, as fast as I can. But uh, there's a lot, there's a lot about, about um, diagnosing these things. And then, and even, and it's scary because even when I watch Bardwell, I watched a lot of his videos tuning quads. Um, I really got no actionable information out of it. He, he says, I think I need to up the eye gain a little, you know, well, but, but and then he'll, do, and then he'll do it. I said, well, no, that, that, no, maybe I need to lower the eye gain a little, you know, <laughs> it's just like, it's just like stabbing in the dark. I, and, and I watched Drib, you know, Drew, uh, his like tuning Drib. videos, same thing. Well, I'm a, you know, I'm a, and a lot of the results that these guys get, there's only one really true way, I think, to tune, to tune a quad. Trial and, and error. That is, no, black box, you get your mm. black box logs and you look at the charts and graphs and you can actually see what the flight controller is doing in response to everything and whether it's overshooting or undershooting or and that's the scientific way and the proper way to tune and i'm i'm working on learn it, learning that right now but that i mean is is as complex as it can be there's a channel on youtube the guys it's uav tech uav tech and this guy's a friggin' genius. He's like one of the devs or beta flight or something. But I mean, he's 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 really uh, really knows his stuff. And he 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 starts talking about this stuff and math formulas and on. And I'm going, whoa, what are those default pids again? You know, <laughs> just <laughs> stick with the defaults. And and, and again, it 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 depends. Uh, the only problem is the bigger the quad, the harder it is to tune because the more momentum the quad has in any maneuvers, yeah. the more inertia it has, the bigger the props are, the more likely they are to be out of balance and add some vibration. Mm, um, great, great. And there's there's a lot more, which is why you see all of these cine whoops, these new cine whoops that they're, they're selling that all have the DJI, so they're all three inch, three inch right. quads because the three inch quads at least the ones that i have are the smoothest <laughs> flying and even this tiny little bugger flies flies smooth as could be um this little thing here flies except for a little prop wash oscillation when you're coming down hard and then give it throttle it might jiggle a little bit but uh mm -hmm. i'm not taking movies with this so to me it's not that <laughs> yeah. that important that it be uh that slick and clean uh, mm -hmm. I, I the only thing I don't like about this is there's a little right angle USB adapter see it can you see it uh, there? Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. right there I'm holding my hand on top of it and, yep. and, and yep. because you can't get the USB plug down here in in under behind the motor where it is right. so so you got to be careful when you're taking this adapter in and out of there that you don't rip the usb socket off the board <laughs> yeah and I, I, but hopefully i won't have to be plugging it in plugging it into beta flight all that often so right, right. well all right guys i think we're we about did it tonight accomplished yeah, something good accomplished something and i hope uh i hope everybody might have picked up a little something Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, yeah. it's what we're doing it for. And I mm -hmm. got, I got my little project done at the same time. So, uh, uh, so, uh, with that, it's uh, just pushing 10 o'clock. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. it's well, late, it's but I, I, I do see a cigar in my future <laughs> this evening. And I, Mitch, those it. things are huge. Well, well why? why? Holy cow. What? Your cigar is the one you were smoking. I think it was yesterday. No, it's a, it's a, it looks big because I hold it up at a camera like it's close to the camera. It's a 52 ring gauge, which is a pretty standard size. It's called a, to, a Toro, Toro size, six by, six by 52. But uh, listen, it's my one lousy vice. Yeah, in, in there you life, go. You know, I don't drink. I don't I eat right. I don't, you know, I take care of myself, but I love, I, I smoke the cigars and 
I don't even, I don't inhale them. I just puff on them. And the worst that I might happen is lip cancer. That I, I don't walk around with a chomp in my lip all day long, like yeah. somebody yeah. or, or these guys who yeah. chew snuff or chewing tobacco all day yeah. long. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. So with all the precaution, with all the precautions I take and all the sunscreen I used all my life and everything else, yep. I still got, I still managed to get melanoma, um, mm -hmm. malignant melanoma oh, on yeah. my nose, yeah, right. on my nose and, and had to go through that. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it reminds me of a, uh, a soft drink cozy that I saw once. You know what a cozy is. Yeah. 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 They keep it cool uh, warm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's a foam thing you stick. Anyway, yeah. it said, eat right, stay fit, die anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Yep. 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 <laughs> so, and then the, and then the, uh, the, the, the virus, which we won't mention tonight, comes along and screws up, screws up everything. But, you know, it's funny for me because this is my life anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I, at this point in my life, I'm home all, all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't go out and eat. I go out, the only time I go out is to shop a little bit and go flying, maybe visit my kids yeah. uh, every once in a while. But other than that, I stay home all the time. So mm -hmm. if, if I got quarantined at home, I'd have to, I'd say, what's different? You know, what's yeah, I was different telling that to my wife. <laughs> We're homebodies, so it wouldn't really affect yeah. us that much. Other than going yeah, to work, what's but different? Just what's moms. different about it? But I'm still puzzled as to just how much toilet paper does one human being need yeah. Yeah. over, a, say, a one or two month period? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you, but in a month or two, I, I the amount of toilet paper that I use it, it doesn't register anywhere. Like uh, I better have <laughs> yeah. a, big su a big supply of it. Like I better have a thousand. Did you I see that thing I saw? I just feel comfortable with it. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's crazy. Of all the things I never would have guessed, if somebody says, guess what there's going to be a run of in the stores? And I'm used to runs in, on stores because of hurricanes. Mm -hmm. when, when, they, when those hurricanes are five, six days out, it gets nuts down here. You have never seen generators go off the shelf like Home Depot and Lowe's. Yeah. Yeah. Thousands Mm -hmm. of generators in a day i mean wow. the, the volume of these things that they sell is in, is incredible and yep. then yep. then after the hurricane the volume of returns on generators that they get <laughs> is, is unbe unbelievable people mm -hmm. yeah you know yep. it, it, sounds it, like a boat yeah <laughs> and, and uh bottle of water gas cans mm -hmm. uh canned food yep. uh, but uh, for this, why are, I mean, tap water doesn't get affected by this. Why is nope. everybody so worried about having bottled water? Yeah. Uh, maybe, they don't, maybe they don't like to drink their tap water. I don't know. I, I drink my tap water all the time. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Oh, no, I put it through a Brita. And when New York water is supposed to be really good. Well. So you, even if you put it through a Brita, it's still tap water. You don't have to buy no, it. I understand, but I give it that little extra. extra. My building's built 1950. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, we have galvanized yeah. pipes. We don't have copper yeah. pipes. And they don't I look so built, good inside. I was, I was built in 1947. So I'm, <laughs> I, was, I was built before I bet before your plumbing your, is better. <laughs> yeah. I, I was built before your, before your building. Yeah. 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 Mitch, I want to post this link. I want you to watch it, or maybe even put it on. It's the Interceptor. I think you. I think you like this thing. Oh, the. Yeah. Uh, the is your home? I've is your home? I didn't notice. Is it carpeted or floor? It's a combination of both. Uh, well, it does. Now, it this is somebody's. This is somebody's video, right? That's, no, that's Marlo's Marlo. video. Who's? Marlo's. Marlo. Oh, this is your video. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. All right. Hang, hang, hang on a yeah. second here. Let's uh, let's see. And the if music I can... is YouTube friendly. It came from YouTube, but you don't have to play it. Hold on a second, man. I'll tell you what. I just I completely screwed myself because I went and opened it, and in my pop out, it opened in my pop out chat window. So now I lost my chat. <laughs> Uh, -oh. uh how do you go can you uh, i thought you could just right click and go and say back, back. back there it is back there's my chat okay so let me take this link 
and go over here and, and, and get a browser window open first before I click on it. I learned that if I open a browser window first and then click on the link, the same fr friggin' thing happens. Okay, so that uh, that wasn't the answer. Uh, lots of fun, Mel, lots of fun. I need to highlight this and copy and paste it, and I need to- And if you get two here. people with two different channels, you can race around. <laughs> Emacs Interceptor, and uh, let's make it full screen and come over here, and there we are. Yep. yep. All you need to make a ramp for it. Or you That's jump. the next thing. I got to do it, and I'm going to dedicate it to Drone Days because he uh, suggested it. <laughs> well, so you just DVR'd your goggles, huh? Correct. Correct. Well, that 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 would definitely help you in two of the three dimensions that you have yes. when you're flying it it right. help you steer but there's no, no not really the there's, steering, just, just the whole fpv experience coming oh, at you okay somewhere. yeah because you're not you don't have any banking angles you don't have no no and it's just the you know the the controller with the wheel i'll yeah. show you when with it's just very simple but for 55 bucks i mean come on <laughs> it's so much fun. It's just <laughs> your, wife, your wife must really think you've lost it completely. No, she enjoys to see me happy, and vice versa. It's all good. <laughs> That's what life's that about. Looks right? like, that looks like fun. That looks oh, like it a is, good man. time. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and it gives you the ah. sensation you're going quick, but you're really not going that fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, guys. All right. All right. I'm getting All right. the old guy the old guy's wearing out here, getting tired. So yeah, my butt's uh, kinda yeah. getting sore. Yeah. yeah. Thanks I'm for steady. thanks for your help. <laughs> thanks for coming in and uh hey, you're yes, sir. and helping me moderate. Fun to be here, Mitch. Have a good night, Mitch. Uh, always good to have you. And uh, Carlos, you take care. Be good. I'll see you on uh, Thursday, God All bless. right. Be well. See you on Thursday. All right. Take care. Take care. Yeah. Good night, guys. Good night, everybody. Bye. And that leaves me and Spank. So let's bring in some traveling music here. Let me thank everybody for coming in tonight. Mel, Drone Days, thanks for being here. Carlos, uh, John, RC's Funds Diversion. Uh, who else we got? I know we got some more people in. That looks like uh, Metro Drones. Bill, thanks again for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Uh, and uh, Bob Casey, I don't know if he's still here. He was, he was here, and uh, I saw Rick Halber way back at the beginning. But uh, if I missed any of you, Bob Casey is still here. Good, good. Grab these cigars. <laughs> thanks, Bob. Hey, thanks for hanging in there with us. And uh, as usual, guys, you know, take the, take the rest of it. <laughs> 1947. Yeah, that was a good year. That's the year the Earth found me. Uh, God, it seems like a thousand years ago when you say it. 1947. Uh, holy cow. We're coming up to 2047 here before we know it. Anyway, guys, take the rest of the night off. Play with your drones. Have a great day. I'll say good night. See you next Thursday. Thanks again for coming, and I'll turn it over to my cohort. Spank the monkey and he can say goodnight. Say goodnight, Spank. <laughs> <laughs>